Want to keep staring at the wall, or do you want to go to work? I mean, it's a pretty interesting wall. I thought you and Tony were still gazing into each other's eyes. How do we look? Well, we're not the 27 Yankees. We got some hitters. They're good. They're not a team. Let's beat them into shape. Avengers! Hey everybody, it's Charlie. This is going to be a video all about the Captain Marvel deleted scene from Avengers Age of Ultron. They were thinking about including her way, way back during phase two. Obviously things went down very differently, but there's a big story about why that happened and where her scene would have gone because originally she was a Joss Whedon idea that then they just cut out at the last minute and wound up not doing. We're doing a new IMAX giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave an Avengers comment on the video. So the big deal with Avengers Age of Ultron is that they actually shot footage intending to add Captain Marvel in CG after the movie was done because the movies take so long to complete in special effects. You shoot a lot of background plates for the special effects artists that then just digitally place things in. Characters, anything that you would want to add to a scene. So this is Kevin Feige's quote about deleting Captain Marvel out of Avengers Age of Ultron. He says, there were drafts that maybe people somehow got their hands on and read early included some characters, maybe others but certainly one, which is why it's dangerous to read scripts early on and talk about them early on, making you wonder who those other characters they considered putting in Avengers Age of Ultron. Now this is just about Captain Marvel, but Kevin Feige also insinuates that there were other early Avengers characters they were thinking about adding to the team for their phase three roster that they probably held off for phase four that we'll meet pretty soon. So let that blow your mind. Which other big A-list characters were they thinking about adding to the team? I'll talk about who I think those characters are at the end of the video. This is primarily about Captain Marvel though. So he goes on to say, Captain Marvel was in a draft, but to me, it would have done the character a disservice. To meet her fully formed, in a costume, and part of the Avengers already, when 99% of the audience would go, who the hell is that? It's just not the way we've done it before. Thanos is the good version of the audience members going, who's that? Because he's clearly a bad guy. For comic fans, he represents a specific storyline. You can get the buzz started from fans, from non-fans with that cameo, as opposed to a title character who deserves their own story. Even Black Widow, you don't meet in the last two seconds of Iron Man 2 wearing her costume. You evolve that going forward. Then Kevin Feige goes on to say, the way we reveal Scarlet Witch in costume at the end of the movie, those were Captain Marvel plate shots for special effects to digitally add her later. And Joss Whedon said to me, we'll cast her later, question mark. And I said, yeah, sure, we'll cast her later. Then you know what happened later. They decided to save her for the Avengers Infinity War post credit scene where they tease her with the pager. Then you meet her in her solo movie. So when it came time to actually use those special effects shots and add them to the movie, Joss Whedon's like, well, if we're not going to add Captain Marvel, we can use it for Scarlet Witch and she'll just float down into frame because Captain Marvel was going to float down into frame like that. He says it made sense for her character. She's come to their side talking about Scarlet Witch and she deserves a cool intro, which will feed into another movie that we'll start shooting in a few weeks. That movie was going to be Captain America Civil War. Scarlet Witch is obviously a big part of that movie, the Sokovia Accords and how they break apart. So you do wonder if they had actually put Captain Marvel in that scene, introed her full blown in costume, she would have been a member of the Avengers at the beginning of Captain America Civil War. Which team would she have fallen on? Would she have been Team Iron Man? Would she have been Team Captain America? Then you have the problem of a power imbalance. So in Captain America Civil War, you have Scarlet Witch versus Vision, two cosmic level powered people. So they sort of try to balance the sides out a little bit and it makes more sense emotionally that they would be on opposing sides. It creates more drama and tension between them. But if you throw Captain Marvel into the mix, she's another super powerful character creating a huge imbalance in one of the teams, no matter whose side she takes, whether it be Captain America or Iron Man. And obviously we have Civil War 2 that came out the year the Captain America Civil War came out. That was more of a Captain Marvel versus Iron Man over the case of a special Inhuman. So that doesn't necessarily mean that she would have been Team Cap. Just like War Machine, she's a part of the military. She respects that structure. So it'd be more likely, I think, that she would choose the side of the government, even though she'd be very sympathetic to what Captain America is doing. Here's the other thing too, in their original plan to intro Captain Marvel way earlier during phase three, what would have probably happened is, is they would have had to do her solo movie sometime before Captain America Civil War so that you understand who she is, you actually care about that character before they break the team apart. 
What would have probably happened is that Avengers Age of Ultron came out spring 2015. You have Ant-Man and the Wasp, which is the official sort of tag end of phase two, beginning of phase three. Then in 2016, we actually only had two Marvel movies, and they've typically done three movies per year for the last couple of years. So logically, what they probably would have tried to do is just get her movie out around this time during 2016. So then a couple months later in the spring, you have Captain America Civil War, and it makes a lot more sense where you see what her character is doing. You also can't forget the idea that they still had to introduce Doctor Strange, which came out at the end of 2016 after Captain America Civil War. They still had to intro Black Panther. The only other movie that they could have shuffled before Infinity War, because that's like the last opportunity you have, the movie before Infinity War, to establish all your big characters before you tear them all down because of Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet, is that you may have been able to do a third Thor film after Avengers Endgame and make that more about him establishing new Asgard. You can do a slightly different version of the Hela plot, but largely you'd have to change the nature of that film because so much happened. It was all about destroying Asgard so that he was unprepared before Thanos came. An alternate theory about the history of the MCU, if things had gone down differently and they'd shuffled the movies around, you could have had Thanos destroy Asgard with the Power Stone when he came to find the Tesseract. He could have just killed Odin then because the whole arc during Thor Ragnarok was about Thor learning to do things his own way, becoming a king in his own right without having the crutch of his father to lean on. So in retrospect, I'm totally fine with them cutting Captain Marvel out of the movie. I feel like it was the right decision and just not dealing with her till you get to Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, and Marvel Phase 4. This is the short clip of them talking about cycling the roster in a really big way. This is also important for what's happening right now with Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. My favorite part about Avengers Age of Ultron is what's brought into potential at the end. The fun of the comics is the shifting roster, is the notion that the Avengers begin as a certain roster of people, but over time, some characters go off into their own adventures, new characters come in. So for us, that was always part and parcel of the concept of the Avengers. So it was always the idea that we were going to mix up the teammates. I feel like this is really a kind of a feeling of, a, of an ending of an era and the beginning of another, and I welcome it. I think it makes the audience even that more invested in our interpersonal relationships and the future of these characters, so that's pretty cool. So you look at that and you remember that they cycled the roster with each new Avengers film, except Infinity War and Avengers Endgame are meant to be taken as sort of one really big movie, even though technically they're two completely different stories. They use Infinity War to clear a lot of the roster, a la the snap and dusting everyone. Then heading into Avengers Endgame, you have room for that extra really big new character, Captain Marvel. And when Kevin Feige teases the other really big Avengers characters that they thought about including in Avengers Age of Ultron, but did not at the last minute, I think he's mostly talking about a couple characters we saw during Phase 3, and then some that we won't see till Phase 4. People like Ant-Man, Scott Lang, Hank Pym, that they were just going to introduce in the next movie, makes sense why you would just save them for the next movie, because that was coming up later in the year. There's really no reason to jam them into the end of Avengers Age of Ultron. They probably considered an early version of the Wasp, even though they hadn't quite got to that point in the movies yet. They knew that they would do Ant-Man and the Wasp eventually, but it just took them a little while to get there. They probably considered Black Panther early on because they knew that he was going to be a really big character during Phase 3, but obviously they just decided to save him for Captain America Civil War. There were several different drafts of that too, especially one that did not include Spider-Man if the Sony deal didn't go through. And of all the other characters that could possibly fly and they could use that plate for, I don't think that they'd be doing Adam Warlock or any of like the really big cosmic characters like Nova yet, because I still think that Captain Marvel was higher on their list than some of those other characters that we'll see during Phase 4. Like, obviously, we're getting ready for Adam Warlock during Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, so he'll be a character eventually. Kevin Feige said that a Nova movie is very high on their list, so like a lot of the bigger but secondary characters that aren't necessarily critical to what's going on right now will be much bigger during Phase 4. The only other really big character that they cut out of Avengers Age of Ultron that they spent a lot of time talking about was the gray version of the Hulk. And that actually came about because of a couple errors during post-production when Joss Whedon kept pushing the special effects artist to make him look crazier and crazier. So what happened is, is that the color timing of the scene changed him and he started to look kind of gray. So Joss Whedon got the idea, oh, gray Hulk from the comics. We'll just give that to you and you can save him for a later movie or you can decide to do whatever you want to with the character. Character. So in that case, they considered Grey Hulk a completely separate character than they would have considered the regular version of the Hulk. Because in this moment here, when he's been mind warped by Scarlet Witch, it's supposed to be the Hulk 
hulking out which funny enough they actually did do in the comics only his name was Kla. it was basically hulk spelled backwards and it was during avengers axis when everybody got their alignment changed heading into avengers endgame now we obviously know we're probably not going to see gray hulk even though he's a chattier version of the hulk we're going to see something more akin to professor hulk which is sort of a balance between banner and the hulk so you have the mind of banner but all the strength and the power of the hulk the best of both worlds my Captain Marvel review will post next week. I'll do Easter eggs and all the normal post credit scene videos, everything. Leave your requests in the comments below. Click here for all my Avengers Endgame trailers and bonus videos and click here for my non-spoilery Captain Marvel review. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.